Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're gonna to be learning how to implement uh, an infinite scroll while fetching an API. So this is the kind of thing that you might find in your you know, social media apps, etc. So this is a fetch request. And now you can see the little um, scroll bar on the right hand side. As I scroll down, it's just gonna fetch again. It's gonna get to the bottom, it's gonna decrease, and it's just gonna keep going until we finish uh, all the data. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So to get started, I've got a brand new React app here and I created that using Vite and I've removed some of the boilerplate code and I've just added a bit of styling, a bit of CSS to, to make the example look nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add our dependency, which is gonna be the React query dependency. There we go, I'll let that run. And while we're doing that, we're just gonna figure out our um, GitHub API. The, the search API is the one that we're gonna be using today. So I'm gonna head over to the GitHub uh, REST documentation. I'm gonna go over to the reference search down here, and we're just gonna use a search repositories here. So this is just an API that you can you know, search repositories um, and it'll just bring you back of all, a list of all those repositories and you can basically uh, paginate it. So you can say how much you want per page and you can tell it the, the page number that you want to, to fetch, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let's just copy this URL into uh, a different tab and we're just gonna use this to, to quickly test it out. And what we'll do is we'll pass in this uh, this query here, I guess. Let's do Ruby on Rails. So I think I just need a question mark here. Um, actually, let's make it relevant here. Let's pass in React.js, uh, React.js, just like that. So if you hit this API, you can see here, uh, it returns a JSON object um, with the total counts. This is the total number of results, which uh, we'll use later on. And then it returns an array of items. And you can see that by default, the um, the pages or the number of items per page is 30. That's why we get 30. And we're starting off at page one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna explicitly add these in just so they're clear. So we're gonna do per page equals uh, 30. And we're just gonna start off at page is equal to one. So that's gonna be our starting point. And then later on, we can uh, update this page and see how that works. So the first thing we need to do is introduce React Query. Um, and if you're not familiar with React Query, I've got a story on that, so I'll leave a link in the description and somewhere on the screen. Um, but basically, we just need to add a client and then wrap our app in a, in a provider. So I'm just gonna add the client now, Query Client. There we go. And I'm just gonna add one um, default option, and that's gonna be the Suspense option. And it's worth noting that this Suspense option is still in experimental mode, um, but it's just gonna make life a tiny bit easier, uh, so I don't need to fiddle about with loading states. Um, and I'm just gonna add the query client provider here, pass in the client, just like that. And then finally for that suspense, we're just gonna add react.suspense here with a fallback of, we'll just add loading for now. That's basically everything you need to get uh, React Query uh, up and started. So we're gonna head over to our app, um, JSX. Um, we're just gonna use the, the link uh, that we set up here so the API, um, the, the GitHub API, and we're just gonna create a function to, to basically fetch out to that uh, API just to, to start off with and, and see that data. So let's create a function called um, fetch repositories, uh, just like that. And that's gonna be an async function. And we'll just do response is equal to, we'll just await the fetch, just paste that in just as is, and we'll just return, I'm not gonna handle any of the, the error scenarios for now, I'm just gonna return the, uh, the JSON from that. So that should be quite simple. And then down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in React Query to, to fetch our data. So we'll do use query. We're gonna change this. So we'll just start off with the basics. We're just gonna do one fetch and then we'll, we'll change it to the infinite scroll. So use query, we're just gonna add a, a query key. So let's just do uh, repo repositories, um, repositories, that's fine. And we will add in our fetch repositories function. And then all we want to take out from here for now is the data. So while it's loading, it's going to fall back to the suspense and then we can just uh, basically uh, query the data here. So let's uh, map over our data. So data.map. And let's just remind ourselves what it is that we're mapping over. So we're mapping over the items. So it's actually data.items.map. And we're just going to display the, uh, the name and the description um, of the repository and that should all be styled found. So let's do um, repo, and we will just wrap this all in um, a, a list. So what I'll do is I will unorder the list at the top there. So 
So these are all going to be list items, and they are just going to have a paragraph with the uh, what do we say uh, repo dot name, and then another p with the repo dot uh, description. I think that's everything. The one thing I always forget is to add a key, and we'll just do repo dot id. So I think that's uh, fine for now. Um, yeah, that's that's basically. Ooh, let's add. The brackets there there we go so we've got our repositories you know showing absolutely fine and we can scroll to the bottom of course now we want to add the infinite scroll so let's go ahead and do that so the first side that we're going to look at is basically um we're going to be configuring when uh, the fetch is actually called so what we want is basically as soon as i come close to the bottom of the document or roughly uh, the bottom of the document i want to trigger a fetch that will basically fetch the the next page and, and append it to the list right so there's probably a million different ways to do that so i'm just going to Add, um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to add a couple of listeners onto the document on the scroll event. So anytime the scroll, uh, anytime you scroll on the page, it's going to call this uh, this function. And then we're going to do a quick calculation based off of the height just to see where you are roughly on the on the page. So what that's going to look like is let's do a um, document dot add event listener. Like I said, we're going to listen on the scroll and we're going to call an on scroll function which uh, I've not created yet. Um, and let's just uh, do a cleanup. So I'm just going to return a function that removes the listener, remove listener, just like that. And now let's just create our on scroll function, which takes in the uh, event. And this is where basically the implementation is going to go. So there's going to be three properties that we need to calculate um, basically where we are or if we're at the bottom of the, the scroll page. And we're going to get them all from the document. And these are going to be uh, scroll height scroll top and the client height and we're going to get these from the event dot target which is the document um and we're going to go for the scrolling element there so the scroll height is basically the the height of the the, the content of the page so it all depends on the content of the page doesn't doesn't matter how big your browser is or how big your screen is it's the actual content there um so we can actually have a quick look at that if i open up the, the terminal here uh let's close this so if i do document dot scrolling element dot um, scroll height. There we go. So that's gonna be three three seven five one, and that's not gonna change regardless uh, of the size of the browser. It only changes depending on the content inside. Scroll top is basically if I put my mouse here at the top of my my inner window of the browser, how far away is that from the top of the scroll height of the of the actual window? So obviously at the top here, I'm at zero. So if I do scroll top, it's gonna be zero. And as I move down, it's going to increase, which makes sense. And as I get towards the bottom, it's going to be, in this case, it's going to be 3151, right? And the remainder, so 3751, the total minus 3151, which is basically everything all the way down to here, is basically the height of my screen, which basically takes you down to the very bottom, right? So if I do document dot uh, scrolling element dot client height, that will be 600. And if you add these two, so that takes you all the way down to here. So from the bottom, if you add 600, you get up to the top of the client, the top of my window. And if you add a remaining 3151, that will take you up to the 3751 of the scroll height. Hopefully that makes sense. I always forget which one's um, very confusing, but you know, if you take anything away from this, basically understand that the this here is basically the sum of these two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these to figure out if you're basically at the bottom uh, or near the bottom, right? So what we can do is we can say, let's take the full height. Uh, let's remove the scroll top, which will take you all the way down to here. Um, and then if that is, I guess, equal to the client height, then that means you're at the bottom, right? Because the height is from the bottom to the top of the window. So if it's equal to the client height, you're at the bottom. So what we want to do is basically we want to say, Actually, if it's less than or equal to the client height, which it, it can't be less than yet, but then we can just add a, you know, a bit of a buffer. So just say the client height you know, times half. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll log this out. Um, we'll do height and we'll just come over here to the right-hand side. And basically, you see, we can see the highs there, but if we refresh this, so as we scroll down, we've got nothing, nothing, nothing. And then when we are 1.5 times roughly the, the client height, it's gonna start logging Hi, and that's just going to continuously log um, as long as we're, we're we're below that, right? So hopefully that that makes a bit of sense. And of course, we don't want to 
fetch every time. So that's just made 126 fetches. So um, there's a few different ways to to, to dedupe um, the, the, the calls. And I think actually React Query has got some of this uh, functionality built in. But what we're going to do here is just we're going to add a, a simple flag to 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 see if we're um, to see if we're fetching, just so we don't actually make any more calls. So what we're going to do is we're going to say fetching is equal to uh, false, and then in here we're going to say fetching is equal to true. We're going to do our actual fetch here, and then fetching we're going to reset it basically is equal to false, and then finally we're just going to also check in the if statement. So we're going to say okay if we're fetching. Uh, so if we are, yeah, if we're not fetching, sorry, and the rest. So this is where we're going to make the call, and we're only going to make it if we're not fetching currently. So that way, basically all this 106 will just be condensed to one, and then once the, the call is finished, we can then, you know, enter here again. So that's how this is going to work. So at this point, the next step is to actually implement, you know, the fetch for the next page. Um, and uh, of course, the, the current fetch doesn't, you know, doesn't take in a, a page parameter, so we can't do that. So we can change that in a moment, and um, we need to update the use query because if we use the existing one, it's just going to bring us back the the uh, the same page. So we can just add a, a page parameter here. And we'll just default it to one for now. And of course, we can just interpolate this. Um, so this function is now you know it's able to to return multiple pages. Um, but the question is, of course, where do we store the the page? Where do we store that state? Um, usually, you might have to implement something like that yourself. But in this case, we're going to use uh, a different hook from React Query and basically get them to, to implement that for us. So if we have a quick look at uh, React query use, oh, I think I've searched this before, use infinite query, and let's have a look what that API looks like briefly. Um, so you can see the use infinite query hook, which takes in query keys, so that's similar, it takes in a function, and in this case, they basically give you the, the page param. So they're storing that state for you instead of you, know, you implementing that yourself. And then you can pass that into your your function, which we will do. Um, but in order to do that, of course, they they expose a couple more options, which is basically, you know, here's a, a property. Can you implement the function that tells us how to get the next page? So you provide the implementation, and they store the state for you. Um, and then from that, you can then you know use whatever functions here. So we've got the has page or has next page function, which is useful. And then of course the fetch next page function, which actually you know executes the fetch. So um, if that doesn't make too much sense, that's all right. Let's let's go over it now and just see how that uh, that works for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this to use infinite query. We're going to keep the query key the same, so that doesn't change. We're going to change this into a, a function, and you know we're going to um, we're going to destructure the page param from here. And this is something that React Query provides. So. We just trust that they've they've got that right, and I think they default that to to one here. I'm not sure that we need that because we've already got a default, but that's okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in um, basically the additional options. In this case, I'm just going to implement the next page, um, and it's very similar for the for the pre previous page if you if you need that. And we're just going to copy this entire line. I'm just going to have a quick look at this. So this completely depends on the API that you're working with. Um, so you can see here uh, you may have the next page cursor or the next page number or whatever it is within your API. And if you've implemented that, this is all you need. In this case, the GitHub API doesn't actually provide that for us. There's nowhere that says you're on page five, move on to page six, uh, et cetera. So we basically need to figure that out from ourselves and um, we can basically use these parameters to figure that out. So the last page is exactly that, the last page, the data from the, the last call that you made. All pages gives you a list of all the pages that you fetched and of course, if you have fetched five pages, that means you're on page six. So what we can do here um, is basically, in theory, what we could do is just do all pages uh, dot length, I think uh, plus one. But what we also want to take into consideration is, you know, where is the, the last page basically, right? So the last page is going to, you know, depend on the total count, which we have, and the, you know, per page. So I'm going to assume the per page is going to be um, 30. So we know that's 30 is hard coded in there. So we're just going to use that as a hard coded reference. But the the total count is going to the count. So the way you basically tell uh, React Query that there's no more pages is basically by returning undefined here. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, what's the max max number of pages? And that's just basically going to be the last page dot total count. So that's the total count divided by uh, divided by 30 because that's the, the amount we're getting on each. Um, on each request and then we're going to do well what's the um what's the next page and the next page is going to be i guess all pages dot length so this guy here and then what we want to return is we want to return if the next page is 
uh, less than or equal to max pages, then we want to return the next page. Otherwise, we're just going to return undefined. So this will basically hopefully mean that if it's undefined, uh, it's not going to execute a function to the bottom. Otherwise, it's going to return the next page that gets fed in as the page param, calls the fetch repositories with a new page, and then the rest, because we're destructuring the data, it's just going to to work as um, as normal. So we can remove that import there, and we can scroll down to actually the data here. So the two things we need to know here is, do we have another page? Uh, should we make a fetch? And again, this will um, this will basically return false if this is undefined. And of course, we need the fetch next page function. So this is actual function we use to call if we uh, want to make the fetch. So in here where we've got the console log high, I'm just gonna do a simple check. If we have a next page, then fetch next page. Simple as that, call that function. And because we've got everything set up, and actually I do need to uh, await this, so we'll just uh, make this async. As I said, because the this is all implemented, what the data, what's going to happen is this is just going to be added to the data. So the the new pieces of um, the new pages are just going to be appended uh, onto the data, and the the data does change shape slightly. So it no longer is just flat like this. So let's have a quick look at what it looks like. So I'm going to console dot log data here and we're just going to comment this out just so we don't uh, break the page i'm just going to head over here and open up the terminal and if we scroll down so we can see now instead of just getting the of course the response from from github we've got a bit of a wrapper here which is basically um most importantly it's got the the pages uh, in it it's got the page params which i guess we can ignore for now but the pages which is an array of all the responses so it's just basically added uh, an additional layer so what we can do here is simply, you know, we can iterate through all the pages and then iterate through all the, uh, the items in the pages. So we can do data.pages.map. And within that, let's just take everything here, bring it up. Hopefully that's enough. Then we can do, I think it's gonna be page. And this becomes page. So everything else should stay the same. So we're going through all the pages and then within each page, we want to list it exactly like uh, like we did before. So let's save that, head over here on the right hand side, clear the terminal. And if we go over to the network request and just start scrolling down, hopefully what happens is as we get somewhere near the, the bottom, um, instead of logging high as it was doing before, it's actually just going to make a, another fetch and you can see the, hopefully the, the bar here will, will get a bit smaller. So We'll go down as soon as we reach somewhere near the bottom. You can see that happen there. Page two, there we go. So that called page two instead of page one, and you can see the the bar basically got smaller. And then if we continue scrolling down, scrolling down, we'll we'll take this up a bit. Um, scrolling down, scrolling down. It's going to make a page three call, and then again. Now I've got one of these kind of fancy mouses, so I'm just going to spin it and it's just going to keep going forever basically until it hits uh, in this case a uh, 403 which is um i guess the api rate limit exceeded um which is actually good timing because i think that hopefully shows uh, everything that uh, that we need for the tutorial so i think i'm going to wrap uh, everything there of course there's a few different ways to implement basically all of these but this is a nice kind of simple way to give you exactly what you need and um yeah, I think uh, I'll call it there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I shall see you in the next one.